Well, I was going to ask you, uh, you know, sort of touching on what you're talking about there, um, you know, with all the research that you've done and all the, <clears throat> the, uh, the, the, the F, was it called FOBs? <laughs> <laughs> no. Or FBO. Blinding flash of the obvious. BFOs, that's what it is. Yeah, sorry. I'm, I'm a yeah. little... Um, yeah. But, uh, um, you know, with all the research you've done, all the training that you've done, you know, both physical and academic, academic and, and, and the like, um, is there anything that you could pinpoint as to, you know, what something that you know now that you wish you had known sooner? <laughs> yeah. yeah, how to keep my mouth shut would have been one of them, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that that certainly got me in a lot of trouble over the years, you know. So, um, here's a few. Here's something. Let me say about that. You know, um, I'm trying to find a way with which to say this. That doesn't sound as bad as it's going to come out. You know, um, I think there's a lot of people teaching today that shouldn't be teaching. That's what I mean to say. And and I I do fully understand the uh, the charm. Uh, that's associated with, you know, wanting to be a teacher, you know, and, and, uh, and I certainly understand all the good that can be, that can come with it, even if they're not like qualified to be a teacher. I, I get all that. I get, and I get, you know, how, you know, uh, you know, how sincere maybe people are. I, I see lots of folks who, who, you know, they do what I refer to as monkey see monkey do, you know, and I don't mean to say, I don't mean to put a damper on the word, that's the way my teacher showed me, and that's the way I'll continue to teach, because that's the way that his teacher taught him, and uh, mother to daughter, father to son, master to, you know, I don't, actually, that's not true, by the way, but I understand that in tradition, and I, and I understand the folklore behind it, and I understand that maybe mother to daughter and daughter to so on, I, 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 I know how that works. I know the way oral tradition is. I get all that, but I'm not talking about making a stew or, you know, uh, fixing a dress or, or, you know, uh, building a house. Uh, I'm talking about something that to save your life. And that in addition to that, in addition to the, uh, the, 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 the functional competency of defending yourself in a, in a, in a very potentially dangerous set of circumstances, you need to have a body uh, that, Oh, sorry, let me change the word body to, you need to have a, a machine uh, with which to deliver the payload, but at the same time to be evasive and get away from the payload coming to you. And, 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 and or, 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 or a machine strong enough to withstand uh, the punishment that you're gonna get at the same time. And, 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 and so that then uh, uh, mandates uh, by extension, that you should be healthy and fit all your life. Not for four years or while you're competing, or oh, there's a fight coming up in two months, you know, no. And I'm not saying you train like a, a fighter at all. I'm just saying this pathway, it doesn't matter which one you're on, and I don't care what it's called or what culture it comes from, unless it has rules and regulations and it's a sport. That's, that's you know, cause, because the, the, the rules and regulations mandate the way you train to accomplish the outcomes. So I'm, let's not go there, okay? Uh, so back to the original again. If you're going to do this, then you need to have a pathway that conditions your body and one that cultivates your mind as well. And I think everybody can get what I mean there. And one that also nurtures the spirit. Functionally competent practices, which example what's happening in real life, uh, uh, violence uh, should be exampled in the way that you learn, uh, practice, and train. Uh, uh, but, it, it, but as I say, you need to condition your body as well, and forever, not just for a short period of time. And, and the mindset with which to understand all the other things that there is to understand, uh, it has to embody this as well. And of course, the nurture, nurturing and spirit. So those are things that I, Patrick McCarty, think are, are uh, hugely valuable. And I don't, I don't think there's a lot of people out there who are, you know, who are, uh, uh, know that and are able to uh, impart that lesson. And, and my study 
of this art, the art form, by the way. This is the combination between uh, science uh, and art that's brought together uh, in a, let's call it, call it a dojo. It's, it's called lots of different places. A, a place where the way is, a, a place where this way brings the fusion of art and science together. Uh, whoever the mentor is, let's call him a sensei, uh, can produce a magic that can, um, that can captivate a human being for the rest of their whole life. And that's what I'm trying to say. And uh, I don't see that. I mean, I, and, and so there's lots of coaches, great coaches, and who coach athletics and sports and, and uh, you know, create champions, karate champions of the world. Good. Uh, and there's people who uh, enjoy a lifestyle, a certain lifestyle. And, you, know, you know, I'm sure we both are part of that movement, by the way. And, and, and it's people who are uh, in the uh, industry part, you know, the industry, they run a dojo or this is the bread and butter, there's that as well. And that's, and that's all governed by, you know, different uh, rules and regulations as well, you know, about marketing and dealing and how to, you know, all that. Uh, and then there's, you know, the physical fitness part as well, you know, there's, there's that part as well. But I'm just talking about the, the source of origin, the nexus, what cradled all of this. And it was the need to protect one's life. That's what it was about. So it became a life protection art. So I started training in the 60s. Uh, and by the time, by, by the way, even when I got to Toronto in 1970, do you know the Kung Fu, like the Kung Fu schools I used to like to go to, uh, to hang out in those days, or, uh, you know, or I had friends and it was, you know, like the Ching Mo over in 14 Hagen Street, uh, uh, you know, just behind City Hall there at the downtown Chinatown. And then there was the uh, Chinese Benevolent Society there, and then there was Walter Ma, and then my John guys up in the, ch uh, the church there on Dundas Street, I just run the corner. Then there was a Canadian Karate Kung Fu the school upstairs, the Chung Brothers. Then there was Hong Muk uh, Kung Fu Club, uh, uh, who did Hong Sing Chun Fat Do Pai, and uh, <coughs> Do Pai, uh, Do Pai, and Hong Sing Chun Fat right there. So, 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 you know, there was a, a lot of stuff going on, but you know, I, I couldn't go in there and watch a class, you know? Oh, I figured out it's because uh, I'm a uh, hakli, you know, I'm a uh, low fun, you know, I'm not the Chinese, I'm, I'm like a white devil. It wasn't because of that, well, there might have been some of that, you know, but it was, the class was secret. Mm. And they were, it was not like, you know, like you have to wait for the other class. This class you're not allowed to, even the Chinese kids were not allowed to go in that class, you know, because it was secret. The Japanese culture today is, is uh, um, the product of a thousand, a millennium of a male dominated, homogeneous, extremely discriminatory culture of conformity in a, in a, in a bedrock of Confucian mindset where, where there's enough mechanism, enough mindset that, that, uh, that uh, uh, things that are established are never, uh, are never challenged. You know, uh, Confucian's uh, first tenet is filial piety, which is uh, ancestor worship, which means the term, for example, the term sensei means someone who comes before you. And, or somebody who's born before you, right? And so, uh, so if uh, you're my sensei, and uh, I would never then question anything that you're teaching me because, first of all, who am I to do that, you know? And the fact, forget the fact that it would be considered, uh, considered uh, hugely disrespectful to do it. You know, there's a lot of formalities and a very hierarchical uh, culture of conformity in Japan, you know? And the other mechanism that's, that supports this so that the mindset never changes is what in Japanese called the senpai kopai system. Which is uh, you know imitative behavior from the juniors to from the seniors to the junior uh, from the juniors to the, from the seniors yeah. uh, and a trickle down effect which uh, perpetuates a, uh, a mindset that prevents change and if that's not enough there's something else metaphorically speaking in Japanese culture which is called deru kui wa utareru uh, sorry so there's kui and kugi kugi means nail like I'm you know, nailing you against the wall man and kui kui means pay. So, you know, a lot of the old craftsmen of, of uh, Japanese culture and woodwork, they don't use nails, they use peg, right? To, to you know, configure everything together. And so, so the metaphor goes like this. Deru kui wa utareru means that a protruding nail ultimately gets pounded down. Mm -hmm. And so if you're the protruding nail in, in social culture, you know, you're the, you know, you're the guy who's, who's, uh, you know, won't take, won't take no for an answer. And you're, oh, sorry, I'll put another, you're the Patrick McCarthy. <laughs> you're you're going to get pounded down all the time. And whether that pounding down comes in a physical manner or, 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 or a, or a intimidative critic, critic, uh, criticizing position or, 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 or the threat of being ostracized, you know, let me tell you, <laughs> I know all about it. You know, at one time, 
I was being criticized so hard, so fierce. Uh, I thought somebody was giving prizes out for it at one time. And, you know, when social media first began, you know, and I, I came on board in 1996 when it did, there was a group, uh, a, a bulletin board platform group called, uh, <clears throat> um, what were they called? Um, the, the, the Karate Dojo, I think it was called. Uh, Cyber Dojo, so called Cyber Dojo, run by a guy named Howard High in the United States. And, uh, and uh, oh my God. Just, man, I, I, you know, I, somewhere in my archives, I still I kept all that stuff of people. Oh my God. You know, me talking about two person drills and flow drills and, you know, uh, joint manipulation, limb untamable, blood and air deprivation, bowels displacement, escapes and counters, fighting on the ground, pressure point, digging into the cavities of the body, you know, and then showing how it works in the cough. And they go, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Yeah, he's an asshole. That's not karate, you know. And, and you know, oh my God, it was, it was like, you know, I, I love this quote by the Iron Maiden man, Thatcher. Uh, it was like, you know, uh, they, they'd say, if he can walk on water, it's because the bastard can't swim. <laughs> but I could do no right, you know what I mean? And, and, yeah. and, and you know, the funny part, the joke in my organization now, for those of my seniors old enough to remember that era, and, and that went on for quite a few years, by the way. That went on for like, a, say, 96 till around 2099, two, three, four years on there, is those people who were most critical of me are now being congratulated for teaching the same stuff. <laughs> you know, and, and by the way, Lord help us. I mean, you don't think that there, there was enough t integrity there or, you know, for them to actually cite the source from where this stuff came from in the first place, right? You know, we actually know this, McCarthy was doing it years ago, but, you know. <laughs> so I just said, uh, you kind of wave it off and say, my wife is great. She goes, honey, imitation is a one form of flattery, don't worry about it. I was curious about, you know, your 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 favorite, uh, if you have one, uh, a favorite concept, and what technique would be the embodiment of that. Um, um, well, I don't really, uh, or or I would say this too. Um, <clears throat> teach them where to look, but not what to see. Um, teach them the principles. Um, not the execution. So when I was uh, doing this research, as I say, and then, and then locking into translations, and by the way, you know, like, so I'm not totally fluent with my, uh, my grammar, you know, and, and, and uh, my, my wife makes a joke, his karate Japanese is perfect. <laughs> For example, I, when, my, when my daughter, who's fluent in Japanese as well, as is my son, you know, uh, say, I was listening to some of her lectures, by the way. Uh, I'm, lo I'm lost, I have no idea what she's talking about. Absolutely not. You know, um, because she's talking about specific uh, things in science and medical that I don't think about. So I was just coming along. And eventually, most of what I do is about martial arts. So that's my, that's my specialty. But, uh, you know, even the writing, the etymology of words, I'm lost in a lot of it. And even my wife looks at she she's not, she can't understand that. this the, the whole story of the movie is another thing altogether. But anyway, I was looking at some work by a guy named uh, um, Mats Morisoka. Uh, he's an Okinawan guy, and he's kind of considered one of the you know early pioneers of the kind of second generation pioneer of karate. You know, having come after the time of Sakugawa Kanga in Okinawa, and uh, Bushi Matsumoto was about born around 1809 and died around the turn of the century, 1899. He's, he's, this is his area. And uh, they, they call him Bushi Matsumoto, or the Buji, sometimes, like Bucho. Yeah. And uh, he, he was responsible for writing some things. And one of them was this uh, 1882, uh, seven precepts about fighting, you know, and uh, about martial arts. And another one was, uh, at 76 years old, around 19, in 1885, he wrote something called uh, Zayunome. Zayu Zayunome, I was reading the Zayunome and it was very provocative. And I was kind of reading some supporting, uh, some supporting stuff. And I'd learned everything, I'd read everything there is to know about uh, Matsumar Sokinana. And I, I, I listened to a lot of the folklore, you know, Kudan, the oral tradition. 
and uh, you know, uh, you know, lots of that stuff is kind of self-serving, you know, to, or you know, it's style-based. You know, it's it's talk that makes you know uh, the style seem more superior than another style. You know, and so I always take all this stuff with a grain of salt. You know, but I, I was really thinking a lot about what Matsumura was trying to say, and at the time I was uh, doing this. Uh, uh, research, uh, translation for Nagamini Shoshin Sense's book called Tales of Open Great Masters. And so, somewhere I get lost in between. And I, I was trying to figure out what do you think this guy's trying to say? And you know, with I showed you my little patch, you know, the, the, the Bumburiolo patch, you know, because uh, you know, you know, the, the, there's that great expression of uh, there's many road, there's many pathways that lead up the mountain, but only one moves to be seen by those who see it. And so I was kind of falling away on the, I was falling away from stylistic learning, you know. And uh, Miyagi Chodin said it best when he was asked, 1936, by Kota Chofu from Oh, I heard there's a lot of styles. What do you think about that? He goes, I don't know about judging from what I see. It's just uh, the same thing being taught differently by different people who understand it differently, you know. Yeah. So I got all this going around in my head at one time, and I'm trying to come up with some something greater than the sum total of its individual parts, if I can use it that way. Because in the end, that's what I would arrive at. That's where my karate is today. And, uh, my, sorry, my kung fu. <laughs> and I said, I got it. I got it. Here's, I think, what he was trying to say, because Tejun Soku... Uh, in the late 17th century, said something similar, but Bushi Matsumura interpreted it in a different way and, and, and reaching out to the youth of his era and seeing what happened to karate in Okinawa by being put into the school system to being uh, uh, taught for a reason other than what it was invented for, you know, as a mechanism through which the funnel of physical fitness and social conformity. I thought this, for all those whose progress may be hampered by ego-related distraction. Let uh, humility, uh, uh, the cornerstone upon which this humble art rests, serve to remind you to place virtue before vice, values before vanity, and principles before personalities. And I thought, that's it. So, you know, you're asking me one thing, I think this, you know, like I said, you know, uh, I think it's incumbent upon any qualified instructor to uh, uh, deliver a timeless message to their learners. Uh, that is, uh, uh, here, here's, I'll show you uh, where to look for your learning, but not what to see. Because not everybody gets the same thing the same way. They don't, mm -hmm. boys don't get it the same as girls. Men don't get it the same as women. That's not being discriminatory. That's just a fact. You, you yeah. can't teach an intellectually challenged or a physically disabled learner the same way you can teach an alpha male or a female. You, you know, just the way to, or you can't teach an 85-year-old guy the same way as you can teach a 13-year-old uh, a uh, kid just coming into puberty. You know what I mean? And, and so, so that's why principles before personalities, verse before wise values, are, because they never change. They're timeless. So I think... Timeless messages, empirical study, institutionalized learning. And I don't, I don't mean that in a parochial sense, you know. I mean that, as I say, that arm only bends one way. When I show you how to wrap an arm around it and make a fulcrum at the triceps tendon, Golgi stretch receptors resting on the, on the uh, style process, and then grab your wrist in a category one lever action at high pressure, that's an uh, arm bar. And I can control you with it, but it can also be escaped from as well. And so these, what's my favorite technique? My, my favorite technique is learning how to nurture or cultivate or condition a learner. I don't call them students, you know, and I don't call them him or her, although gender identity is very important uh, from a defensive point of view. Uh, I call them learners because that's what we all are. We're all learners and we're all learning new things all the time uh, to be able to do the same thing better. You know, my Angelo again. But I'm just saying that invariably, you know, your style is you. There's a, there's a, great, there's a great quote by a guy named uh, Toyama Kanke and he's another Okinawa master who never got much, uh, well, actually he got a lot of press, but it was back in the 50s and 60s and, 
and uh, maybe early 70s. And, and then he would, uh, you know, the modern world's kind of forgotten him, you know. But thanks to my friend, my friend Christian Bellina in Vienna, he's just translated some of his work. And, and uh, it's, anyway, he's coming back. Anyway, the quote that Toyama makes that I love is like this. He goes, you know, when I die, my style dies. And, and I thought, this that is so good, you know. That, that, that's so succinct. It's because, you know, the way, you know, because, you know the Japanese mentality is everybody got to conform to do the same thing the same way, you know. Yeah. And, and I, we can talk about that. I, you know, it's, it's, it's not a conversation they like to hear me talking about a lot, by the way. And I'm, and I'm not a big fan. I, I understand the value of it. I get it. And I can talk about it very well. To, to several audiences, okay. But anyway, that just, that's just not me, you know. And I, I don't like the factory belt stuff, you know, and I don't think that cloning, you know. I mean, like some people just couldn't throw a sidekick that way if their life depended on it. So what, they can't get a green belt or something, you know. And, and what's the value of a green belt anyway? Because the value of a green belt here is not the same as it is over there. And by the time the, 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 the guy in BJJ is only got too much, he's killing the yellow belt, uh, the green belt anyway, you know. So it, it's such a, a convoluted uh, area of discussion. That's why I think, you know, that uh, 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 an over-the-arm rear bear hub has been in existence since two people met each other on the planet. It's going to be one of those acts of physical violence that is habitual human nature forever. And there are 35 other primary acts of physical violence in addition to percussive impact. With, with, and, and by the way, when you mix and match them all together, there are, there are literally hundreds of possibilities, you know. And so, um, so the thing is, but they can be quantified and they can, they can be understood and they can be recreated in a, in a safe learning environment. And, and as a result of this pathway, once they are learned and and the learner understands uh, the magnitude of their dynamics, why they're effective and why they're potentially dangerous, and is introduced to the mechanisms with which to effectively negotiate them and the possibilities of these mechanisms not working and what fail safes to transition to, uh, they shift them from learning into practice. And then the practice takes on a life of its own, where um, working from passive resistance from the learning phase into an aggressive, aggressively, uh, an escalating aggressive uh, uh, resistance mm -hmm. uh, begins to open more doors of discovery through failure. I, I like to make the joke here that's when in, in the practice makes perfect stage. It, who knows how long that will be, month, six, year, who knows, you know, how long did it take your daughter to learn how to drive a bicycle? I mean, you know, some people never get her, other people get in a minute, you know. And, uh, and and that's what they meet Sensei Murphy, you know. Who's Sensei Murphy? Oh, thanks for asking. He, he's the guy who teaches you immediately. What can go wrong will go wrong when you don't want it to go wrong. And pain is a great uh, motivator as well. So that sends you back to the drawing board to say, what I do wrong? How can I do it? How can I make it better? And, and it's not the mechanism that needs to be made better because the mechanism, you know, once you take on board the idea of mechanics, body movement, and you learn about the five ancient machines. Time out. The pulley, the screw, the fixed axle and wheel, the wedge, and the three categories of lever. Shoot, time out. When you learn about those and the principles of the sword and about acceleration, which is about motion to make percussive impact work uh, as a kinetic force energy transfer, uh, you, you know you you kind of get it you back to this working with an aggressive resistance partner, and not just the one aggressive partner, but many and all the time. So so being taken outside your comfort zone becomes the pathway itself. You know, and, and, and how you, Charles, might deal with that it depends upon who you are, because, you know, the, the 60 kilogram girl or the or the or the 150 kilogram guy, you know, they're all going to do it. They're all going to use the same thing differently because of those differences. And those become variables, which we call hang -tick. But anyway, so and if my point is this. If I blindfold you and have somebody go you know, put a sleeper on them or something like that. And then when you wake up and I say, hey, 
Who rendered you unconscious? You're not going to say, ah, it was a uh, orange belt, BJ. No, 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 it was a machado. No, no, no. You're not going to, you can't tell me what style did that to you. You know, kinetic energy doesn't leave a, tra a residual trace like a glass of wine or something, you know. So, so um, you just learn how to do these things and they are functionally effective because you're following uh, a timeless set of uh, practices. So anyway, that's kind of like what I'm about and that's why. I, but, but anyway, so I love uh, the old and the most original forms. And the reason why I like that is because these forms reflect or example the empirical um, learning that had been handed down, the timeless functional practices that had been handed down. So I just want to end this little part here on this exercise I was telling you, because this kind of leads into the habitual life of physical violence. So I, I mentioned to you that, you know, there's 36 acts of physical violence. This is not my idea, really. This comes from the Shaolin Monastery through hundreds of years of empirical observation. And, uh, and you know, they have as, as many as uh, 72 variations on these common themes. And, you know, the, the, the Chinese and the Japanese, are, they love numerology. And, you know, one number is more fortuitous than another. But anyway, I'm not a mathematician, you know, but that uh, 36 and 72 equals 108. And this is a number that's divisible by other lucky numbers in, in Chinese history. So, so who knows if that's really exactly the right number or it was just enough of them that if you got that many, then you would be able to say, I don't really necessarily need to focus on the numbers anymore. It's the conceptual principles that I need to focus on. And that's what I think is my favorite, is figuring out how it works. Because once you figure out how it works, I, I'm in this project, I'm doing a project with you I won't tell you a lot about it, but you know, because everybody, oh, McCarthy thinks he knows everything. And, and you know, maybe I don't, I, I don't know everything. Who knows everything? I, I don't think anybody knows everything, you know. But about a certain thing I know quite a bit. And um, when it comes to, you know, uh, how to break an arm or render a person conscious, I know a lot of ways. And, I, I, and those, uh, those principles cannot be uh, argued. And, uh, and how it's applied, that's the pathway in, 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 a, in, a, in, in the Chinese, or not Chinese, but in Japanese fighting arts, we refer to this as den which means direct transmission. The master teaches the student. And that was the concept behind direct transmission. That's why he had to flutter around for a few years before the guy figured, oh, he's got the right character. Yeah, we'll take him type of thing, you know. Or he's got the wrong character. I'm not going to teach him anything. You know, oh, I don't know if I forgot it. Or, you know. So Jigiden means uh, direct transmission. And so once you know how something works, uh, then you can apply it. But, but, but maybe the way I taught it to you might be the same way that I teach it to this guy because of these other you know, size, age, different, you see? That doesn't mean the technique is going to be different. It just means the way he, so 150 uh, kilogram, uh, 200 centimeter, 30 year old uh, animal, is not going to apply the same way that the 60 uh, kilogram, uh, uh, 25 year old uh, uh, mother of one is going to do, you know what I mean? But, but the act of physical violence that it is associated with, it's never going to change, ever. It, it hasn't changed in 10,000 years, 50,000 years, and it will never, ever change, ever. So it's immutable. Uh, sorry, it's timeless. So how then do you negotiate that? So anyway, as I said, the act of violence has to be replicated. It has to be replicated in a safe learning environment because if you hurt somebody right away, they're not coming back. So if you replicate the act of physical violence in a safe learning environment and you practice it with passive resistance with as many partners as you like until such time as you feel comfortable with it. That's when it's time to move forward. You know, so I always say to teachers, you know, when I was a kid, that's why I say parochial learning. When I was a kid in school, staring out the window because I was bored with a lesson, I used to get the cane on my hand or the strap outside in the hallway. You know, now today when teachers are they're smarter today, right? They've learned more, right? Uh, when teachers see the kid staring out the window or sleeping on his desk, they think eh, maybe the kid's not getting enough sleep at home. Or maybe the lesson is not challenging enough for him. So before we say he's ADD or Asperger's or, or, or whatever, let's test the kid first. Let's study him for a minute. Let's just see. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Oh my God! Look, he was just bored with the lesson. He's so smart, you know. And so boredom 
is usually one of the instigators of uh, initiatives for me to move in ahead. That, oh, he's bored. I'm bored. Okay, what's the next lesson? Let me intensify my study. I was bored doing, I, I can do it so easily. And then, and then, so when you move out of that passive resistance mode and you go from the, you know, the, 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 the meter goes, you know, the meter on the aggressive resistance goes from, from passive resistance to aggressive resistance, there has to be stages of it, you know, there has to be stages of it. That's the, that's the practice, right? Practice means practice. And anyway, so I can't tell you how long that will be. If it's going to be a few weeks, a month, a couple of years, I don't know, right? But I'm just saying that. And some people never make it through there, by the way. You know, Shuhari doesn't mean that everybody gets to read. They, they don't get there, you know. They, they don't get to the transcendent part where they, oh, now I get it. Now I make my own style or something. It may, that, that might never happen. Not everybody's going to become an expert, you know. And so, but the principle says this, that once you've got it, then you can start to train because, because the way you're going to do it is not, basically not going to change for a long time. So that's training now. It's not practice, it's training now. And it's likened to a, a swordsman of the feudal era. Once the person learned the, how, to, how to fight, uh, his training was dueling with his teacher or his colleagues every day. You know, life was measured by the sword. And, you know, so I went out and I, and I, and I, I dueling for the back of the letter, uh, lack of a better term, I duel. You know, 20, 40, 50 minutes of, of uh, back and forth. You know, buckler, sword, bastard, hand and a half, whatever, whatever, so katana, whatever, you know, epe, foil, you know, whatever you're going to do, back and forth. with. And that back and forth was how you kept sharp. So, so empty hand at one against one. I'm going to lead you on the path right now. So let's hypothetically just say, okay, you know, we've quantified all the acts of violence and we spent 10 years learning them, five years, whatever you want. You know, there's a great quote in karate. They say, san men no kata, which means three years on a kata. And Funigoshi popularized that, but it came from another, it, it comes from another, another kotawaza about, you know, if you could sit on a rock for three years, it means, God, you have the patience to do anything, you know. So it, it, it's got to do with concentration on particular thing. But the problem is that uh, because the karate of Funagoshi's era is not this karate of the feudal times, uh, and they were embracing karate for a different reason, you know, as a mechanism in the school system for physical fitness and social conformity to help uh, support the war machine through conscripts, uh, young Young, young physically fit people come out of school to go into the military. Uh, as opposed to the, the Tom Cruise movie where, you know, he's teaching them they couldn't hit the broadside of a barn, you know, in boot camp, you know. So they changed boot camp for the school system instead. And so, you know, so you, you've got this process going along about uh, how kata works and what Funagoshi was doing. And so by the, by the time of Funagoshi's era, which has then been, perpetu been perpetuated to now, you know, is, is if you practice the kata for three years, the secrets will become inevitably, uh, uh, you know, know, you'll know what the, the secrets are. And that's, that's, yeah. that's, that's the same as telling a math student uh, who, who knows, who, who, uh, who has never learned algebra or something like that. Uh, or, or, and you, you give them a, a question with, uh, uh, of uh, trigonometry or something, you know, and ask him to figure it out. It's just never going to happen. You're never going to figure it out because there's no contextual premise. So what I just explained to you provides a contextual premise. The acts of physical violence are the contextual premise by which the application uh, uh, practices are, are, are measured. And so, so you've got the attacker, you've got the defender, you've got the two-person drill, and you've got all this learning, practice, and now training. And so, so what I'm going to say is this, is, is, is if you take these application practices, these fighting applications, uh, conceptual practices, uh, uh, separate the two-person drill, and then take this template that's uh, I don't know, to negotiate how to escape from a guillotine or a headlock or a, whatever you want it to be, and you start to link this template with other templates that deal with other acts of physical violence into some type of geometrical configuration. The end result is that you get something that's greater than the sum total of its individual parts, and that's what a counter is. It is uh, never meant to teach you anything, uh, let, let alone, you know, the secrets will be known in three years. Uh, it was meant to culminate the functional lessons you should have learned in a two-person drill in the first place. 
So anyway, the, the, these, my theory was to uh, 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 bring forth this contextual premise as the acts of physical violence that can be quantified and understood simply. And then to describe the pathway through two-person drills and how the solo representation of those serve as the template from which Kata is created. And, and, and that blew the doors off of everybody. And uh, I blew, blew the doors off of me, because, in, because as I was struggling, through, you know why this wasn't so easy for me to get in the first place? Because I was like everybody else believing the other stuff. No, 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 that's not what Sensei said. No, 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 no. Yeah. This, us, take the heart rate out of it. Um, you know, I, I believe that stuff, you know. Come on, I don't want to give any names here, but you know, I'm sitting up in Japan, and now I'm, 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 I haven't quite made all of my deductions yet. It's, it's around 1991, maybe. I'm at the Marshall University, the Buddha University in Japan. It's March. <clears throat> we have our, you know, March during spring break in academia, uh, in, uh, in school, in schools out for March, spring break. Uh, the university, uh, and funded by the uh, uh, Mombusho, the Ministry of Education, and is supported by the Budokan Foundation, uh, for 5,000 yen, which is like 50 bucks, uh, you could come and have four days of training, uh, room and board, beer, you know, great food, and meet all the top echelon instructors of the... You, you, know, what Budo, you know what Budo is, right? Mm -hmm. Budo is a term that means martial ways, and in those, there are specific ways, like Jiro, Kendo, Aikido, Naginata, Do, Sumo. These are the Budos, okay? Yeah. Nothing else, that, just these ones. So the leaders of those uh, uh, would, would come and they would lecture on the theory and, and science and practice of their arts in, in, a, in a lecture hall, you know, like 100, 100, 100 of us, 100 foreigners, and it was only the foreigners, by the way. We'd sit there and listen to the uh, Japanese. And for those of us who could speak Japanese, we could understand. And, for, and, and a lot of people could not. So they would have translators who would, who would translate and then, you know, you would get a, an abstract and a copy of the lecture and, and stuff. But very, very professionally done. And they were working on the electromyogram and we were in the lab. And pressure plate was fantastic, you know, and it went on for about 30 years. They don't do it anymore, by the way. But anyway, the, the point I want to make this is I'm sitting there. And, and also, in addition to the leaders of Budo, the, the most senior authorities of Budo being there, you know, uh, there would also be a guest every year. I mean, guess would be from Koru, like one of the old arts, you know, Yagyu Shinkageru, uh, Hayashi Zakiru, Tenshin Shou, Katoshin Doru, you know, one of these guys, which was always a treat for us, you know, to get, to get an insight like that. Come on, you know. Anyway, so, uh, <laughs> and then, you know, invariably there's uh, questions from the audience, from the, the learners, the, the students, if you will, in this case, to, they can ask them. And uh, all the masters sit up on a panel on, on the front, you know. Anyway, and you could ask questions. Oh, I got a question. Oh, I got a question. Yes, my question is, you know, for uh, a Professor uh, La La La, uh, Professor Imai, who was like, the, you know, the head of the uh, Nito Ichiru, which is the Miyamoto Mu Musashi sword, for instance. Oh, my, my question is, uh, you know, for uh, Higuchi Sensei, who was, you know, the judo, Olympic judo coach. Oh, my question for Kanazawa Sensei, showed up in my mind. Anyway, so, so one day this guy puts up his hand and goes, and goes, hey, Nanjoka, I'm ah, sorry. Uh, yes, what is it? I have a question. How do I see tomorrow with this? Get on. The guy's got a question. Right. Go. What is it? Yeah. Why, you know, do you, why do you do this and jump backwards three times in the kata called chinte? Chinte. And the guy goes, okay, hang on for a second. And he turns on the guy and goes, uh, he goes, what kind of mistake? The guy goes, what kind of mistake? You know, do you understand? He goes, I don't understand. Yeah. Why are you going like this? Go like this. You jump backwards three times. Why are you doing that? And the instructor goes, Hmm. And I know that instructor could speak English, by the way. I know it because I spoke English to him long before I came to Japan. I, I met this instructor. But no names, I won't say it. I, I know he spoke English. He goes, My English conversation is so good. Therefore, Therefore, I'm going to give an explanation in Japanese. Oh, he's going to explain Japanese. Hi. Okay. 
É, tu nunca se... Ah, just give it me. Long time ago, in Okinawa, a peasant is in the rice field. And um, the samurai comes after him. No, no, no. Sorry. The samurai is in the rice field. And the peasant attacks him with a yari, with a spear. Like, 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 first of all, okay. Okay. Like, first of all, that would never happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like it, it was a, a peasant. First that's of all, a samurai, yeah. a samurai in a rice field. That, 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 that's not going to happen. Right? <laughs> Especially in Okinawa, right? <clears throat> and number two, a peasant attacking a samurai. That would be like, a, that would be like, that would be the equivalent of maybe, I don't know. I better not say it. Somebody will attack me because that always happens. I'm just saying it would be like Mr. Incompetent fighting Mr. Totally Competent. You know, like the samurai spent his whole life. <laughs> That's why he's a samurai from birth. You know, this guy, uh, he's a peasant. I'm not saying that he couldn't swing, swing a meat cleaver or something. I'm just saying that the, the comparison is, is ridiculous. And, and that the, the peasant would have a spear, again. But anyway, but anyway, let's pretend, let's go with the story. So, and, and this guy is giving this explanation like totally serious, totally serious. And so let's, uh, so I'm going to be the peasant person. I got the spear, eh? spear, and I attack the samurai, and I take the spear and I go, shove! I shove the spear at the samurai. Okay? So here, here comes the spear like this, right there. So the samurai first kind of intercepts the, the spear coming at him. Now he can't grab the blade, right? Because if he grabs the blade, he's going to cut his hand off. Mm -hmm. You know, the spears, the three edge, right? So, so Let's just pretend this. So he grabs behind the blade as it's coming toward him. And he seizes it tight, but still it's quite slippery, right? So he fortifies his grip by squeezing down like this. But still, you know, triceps, antagonistic, agonist, you know. So, so, so as this peasant's pushing toward him, he hops backwards first, you see, like this. <laughs> and then the, you know, the, the peasant still, so he, he hops back another time, you see what I mean? And he has to keep his feet together because the rice fields go in a straight line, right? <laughs> you, can make, you can make a story of this, right? Anyway, so, now here's, here's me listening to this. And I'm listening to the translator. And I'm going, that's not exactly what he's saying. I don't think the translator believed either. And but here's what I wanted to say. You're in Japan. We are at the highest source of learning in the land. What land is that? The land of Budo. Mm -hmm. So I'm not, we're not down, we're not anywhere, we're not, you know, we're not in Mississauga having a beer and listening to a story. We are in the leading institute of the culture and the nation from which comes this tradition that brings us all together. And the person on the stage is regarded as one of the most senior authorities in the world, well, certainly in the country. And uh, come on, he's, he's in the Buddha University giving the lecture. You know, come on, you know, let's go with this. And he's telling the story and I'm looking around at the, and I, I always sit down at the front, you know, and I always like it, that's, that's, that's me. And I'm, I'm turning around, I'm looking up at, you know, like more than a hundred foreigners and their eyes and ears are, well, not other, there's a few of the, my friends who are kind of going, I'm going, ah, oh, like that. But, but otherwise, the majority of these guys are going like this, they're going like this, watch, watch. As the story's going, they're going like this. You got to remember now, you, you know, you, you, those guys in Japan who are like teachers or bankers or, you know, people with no education cannot come to Japan. I don't know if you know this about Japanese culture. So the point, why I want to make that point is, is that I want to try, I want to tell you that the 99% of all the people sitting and that audience, listen, we're all, we're all educated people. So, you know, the joke is, you know, ed education is how you learn to get stupid. No, get it. But anyway, so, here's, so here's all the educated people. So watch my expressions. I'm going to pretend I'm going to be like one of those guys listening. One of these guys who are highly educated. Oh. Oh. Oh, I didn't know that. That's it. <laughs> I go in. And you know, the thing is, you could never have stood up and said, that's a crock of a ship. Or who would believe that in a million years? 
you know, that's right up there with my other favorite. Uh, you can read, uh, and I and I've collected hundreds of these over the years. You know, uh, there's a there's a karate series called Best Karate by Nakayama Masatoshi, headed to JK, which is a phenomenal organization. You know, and and led all of the world for many many decades. Anyway, and there's a there's a I think it's volume ten, Sochi Nijishiho and Unsu, where there's a there's a move in the kata where you know you you, you, hit, you, hit, you know you swing your hand around, you hit it like this, you know. And, and Nakayama's explanation was, hit the, clap the hands very hard and it will affect the balance of the person throwing the front kick at you. you, you know, <laughs> and, and. <laughs> Might not want to try that in a fight I've been in, but you know, and so, so um, <laughs> you know, sometimes you can't argue with, uh, you know, the powers of B, you know, they, they often know more than you do type of thing, you know. And, and you know, the thing is, remember the uh, protruding nail ultimately gets pounded down. And, and there's another term in Japanese culture we call uh, murahachibu, murahachibu, which means uh, uh, you're ostracized. You know, it kind of means you're kicked out of the village, right? But, uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but, but it means you're, and being ostracized back in Japanese culture, that's, you know, uh, like having the... Uh, Having been allowed to commit seppuku, you know, hara, would have probably been better because being ostracized means that then you, your family, and no one will ever talk to you or serve you, or, you know, and you, you might as well be dead. So it's yeah. actually worse than death. Worse than death. Yeah. And so, so, you know, if you're, the, if you're the thorn in someone's side, like I am, you know, you get ostracized. Oh, they, you, you, people used to say, oh, you associate with my best, my best, my best uh, detractors. We're all, you know, senior guys in the West, you know, tied up with, you know, their, their styles in Japan or Okinawa. You associate with McCarthy, doors of opportunity may be closed to you in Okinawa. It was funny because I was just in Okinawa a year before last, and I hadn't been there many, many, many years. My God, it was, it was so good to see it. I bumped in a lot of old friends, you know. It's been so long, I've missed you. I get along like I was on fire with everybody. It was great to see people. And interestingly enough, you know, a lot of those guys I hadn't seen since, you know, since I was young, you know, and they were young. And now we're both not young anymore. Right? But it's, uh, you know, uh, people get fixed in the ways they don't want to change, you know. Yeah. And that's, that's a sad thing, you know, and that's a sad thing because, as I say, change is the only thing that's really inevitable in life. And, and nowhere is that more evident than in the fighting arts. You need to learn how to adapt, you know. A great, a great philosophy of Bruce Lee, you know, is, you know, the throw of the old. And by the way, Bruce Lee was very good at going outside the art to find things, to bring him in, you know, to empower his tradition. That's because then, I, I'm, I'm not Bruce Lee, of course, so, and, 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 and nothing like it, but, but I have come to learn that if you look in, you can do the same thing. You look into the practices already. That's why I say the older practices are very valuable because they have this. The problem is that uh, Lee called it the classical mess, you know. And that's because nobody ever questioned anything and it became institutionalized learning. And inst- it was more important how you, you know, had your gi or your belt or what lineage you came from or, you know, no, 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 and, and that's not tradition and that's, and you know, there's only one, the only tradition I know is functionality, yeah. unless it's, unless it's being competent. Uh, otherwise you're dysfunctional and you're incompetent. And uh, no, nobody wants to talk about that. You know? And if I talk about it, I'm being disrespectful to people. You know? yeah. and, and, you're, and, you're, and you're taking away people's favorite toys as well, you know. Yeah. And you know, a lot of times that's why I say these guys shouldn't be instructors, you know, or, you know, family, but we love it, you know, okay. Well, Maybe you do, you know, but the, maybe maybe you should be a learner and said when you should get in class and you know and rather than I right, my teacher died, you know, like, okay, well, you know. now I mean there's a great story. Kano Jigoro's teacher died too after three and a half years. He and his friend sought out another instructor, and then we spent like a year and a half with that guy. So with, with basically five years of experience, he created judo. Okay, and so I say there's always the, you know there's always. Hellboy. There's always one guy who's got the big fist who can do everything. You know, there's always Superman everywhere. There's always the alphas who just, you know, how about the rest of us? You know, the other 99%. And, 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 and but as I say, you know, no, I'm just passing it on because my teacher, my old, you know, these guys, I'm making up a new style. Oh, McCarthy made up a style. I didn't make up any style. This is not a, this is not the style I'm doing. 
It started off with a collection of research that turned into some favorite practices that led down a pathway that introduced me to principles and mechanics. That, and, and once I got fixed, oh, maybe we should call our style uh, uh, Archimedes Rue or something, or, or Newton's, uh, you know, I mean, because it has to do with uh, applied mechanics and, uh, and motion. So, because, you know, when you, when you take all this stuff away from the language and the culture and the costumes, what you've got is human movement. It's all governed by, you know, mechanics and, and principles that are immutable. It doesn't matter, you know, it doesn't matter what language you say them in, you know. And, you know, when you get East and the East is, you know, uh, is one culture, the West is a completely different, you know, we are, we, are, uh, we you and I, we're Western mindset people. And, you know, we, we've been, we've been, we've been taught how to, question everything you know and uh not not that we all do that but that's a that's a that's a that's a yardstick that tends to measure the character of people in the west you know individualism you know uh i do it my way you do whatever way you want you know uh you know who said uh uh your way my way the right way it doesn't exist you know and uh, so and it doesn't you know that's why i say your way is maybe not the best for me but i can guarantee you one thing that if it's functional and you're competent, then I guarantee they're working on the same principles. And how do you wrap that up into, uh, you know, something to sell it as a, as a, uh, as a, you know, something uh, commercially effective? You can't, it's, it doesn't work that way, you know, but, 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 and, and so the next best thing is, is, you know, is styles and methodologies and, and, you know, and that what becomes tradition is the, you know, the passing around. But when you study the history like this, you'll, you'll see, the mistakes that had been made, uh, that have been carved out by people. You know, the, the so-called pioneers of the karate schools, uh, you know, they all had, uh, thank you, uh, uh, sorry, thank you, uh, study groups when they were around them. So why do you have to study it if you're already a ma an expert, you know, so, and um, so, it, but these types of things are not well known in today's uh, group. And you know, the funny part about it is if you go to a boxing club or a kickboxing club or a wrestling club or a catch wrestling or, or, a, or a Machado or uh, Eddie, Eddie's 10th uh, Planet or, or one of the Gracies, uh, I should have said the Gracies first. I'm so sorry. Well, you know, if you go to the Gracie, you just, you just, they, they don't have these problems over there. The boxers, they don't have these problems over there. You know why? Because they're, they're right from day one, it's hands on, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, there's, you know, there's, and that's why in the, in the real world, you know, that's why a white belt could have never beaten a blue belt because the blue belt in a perfect world knows more than a white belt. And so let's see, once you put percussive impact in it and go to karate, and say, well, you know, it's theoretical. If I punch you right square in the face, I could knock you out. So if I do that to you, you're probably not going to come back to class again, you know. And, uh, you know, so that's why it has to become theoretical, you know. But, you know, in judo and, and all the hands-on stuff, is, it, there's certainly theory there. But, I mean, right, 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 right away from day one, you learn how to throw a person up because, and, of course, you know how to do your okami okay, your right fall, so you can mm -hmm. support yourself. But it, in boxing, you gloves, you know, you, you, know you, you, learn how, you learn how your technique's working. You know? Same as kickbox, the same as grappling, and so on. Karate is not that way. And now that the, you know, now that the, uh, you know, the, the, the so-called... Uh, uh, light of day has been seen and people do, or most people are understanding that, you know, the kata is a collection of, of abstract or subjective uh, um, timeless application principles. They are looking. And, they, you know, and that's good, and that's good, that's good. And I'd rather have many of those guys in the one. Oh, it's really like this, you know. But, you know, there's, again, there's still a million people with their own ideas about, you know, I, I kind of I laughed uh, a couple of years ago, there's a group down here in California, work out of a garage. We've just discovered there are throws in karate. Okay, well, how about if I would have said, well, listen, hey, I'm very happy with it. Why don't you come and look at our body of research? Because we discovered that like 30 years ago. And in addition to throws, there's also chokes and 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 and, uh, and joint manipulation, limb entanglement, escapes and counters. Go you know, out over here. Nobody wanted to listen to me. No, 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 no. And of course, if I said anything, I was a bastard, you know, or, or I was being argumentative or difficult. McCarthy's, McCarthy's, you know. So not everybody wants to uh, learn. So that's why I like talking to you and folks like you who, who are willing to, I mean, you were, I was doing what you were doing just in a different way back in the, you know, when I went to Okinawa, I was knocking at doors and said, could I speak to you? 
who are you? Uh, I'm a, I'm a Canadian, first of all, I say they love Canadians. I'm Canadian and I'm a researcher. I'm not here to compete or fight or I don't need any dons from here. I just like, I heard that your father trained with multiple Choki or Miyagi Chojin and, and you know, I was told not to come and see you by the group, by the rival group. Like, oh, really? please come here. And then I, I talk, I ask questions like you and I, I get it, I make notes, I interview, I take reports, stuff like that. And the more guys I came into contact, guess what? I learned more things. Yeah. And so I get it, you know, I get the value of that and make no mistake about it. I know what the value is of what we're doing here. And I hope, and as I said, even if it inspires one person, I'll be happy. So, yeah, we, we, we've unpacked a lot of stuff. I should say you've unpacked a lot of stuff here. Uh, you know, I, I could personally, I could listen, listen and listen and learn and take notes. Like I've been taking notes this whole time, you know, for, for hours and hours more. And, and I, I'm so, so happy that you, uh, you agreed to uh, come on, um, you know, to your point. Yeah. We, we don't know if, if, you know, um, if anyone will be inspired by this, I expect this will capture the imagination of, of at least a few. Um, there, there's a lot of like-minded people out there that, uh, you know, that, that are, they don't live in echo chambers and, and they're not afraid to, um, you know, expose themselves to new ideas and be wrong and, or, you know, uh, have, have their paradigms kind of turned upside down. So uh, um, really, really appreciate your coming on. And the, the, last thing I, the last thing I wanted to ask you is, um, you know, just, uh, where where can people find you or find out about you uh, your website your your organization your 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 books and so on is there anything that I uh, Google just Google Google you know uh, Patrick McCarthy troublemaker you can find me <laughs> well I did I did Google you yesterday I did Google you yesterday and it says Australian researcher <laughs> oh yeah 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 and you know a lot of people think I'm a Get out of my head. And I absolutely love Australia. By the way. I'm really missing it a lot right now. Australia is a very special, special place uh, to me, you know. Uh, they're a lot like Canadians, though. They like to drink, fight, and I uh, forgot the other one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, very, very friendly group and very, <clears throat> very laid back, very informal. Mind you, mind you, a little Vic, uh, sorry, Melbourne, you know, down south, Mexico, we call it there. Uh, a little bit more formal down there. Sydney's, you know, a bigger metropolis like Toronto, but yeah. very laid back. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. Great food, great people, great culture, and the karate's okay as well. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> they, they, um, uh, repeat, and you gotta remember, I lived there, I lived there 24 years. And I gotta tell you, it's really interesting. In the week leading up to immigrating to the United States. Uh, I was down at my local uh, shopping plaza and uh, I went into a place where I've been in many, many times and there was a new girl working there. You know, that's a high school girl. Right? And I said, uh, yeah, can I get, oh, you yeah, I'm American. <laughs> and I went, yeah, yeah, from Hollywood, actually. I'm an actor from Hollywood. Oh my God, are you really? <laughs> but, but, you know, just goes to show you, right? It's like, so, you know, uh, I'm, you know, well accepted in my neighborhood, my community, and everybody knows that I'm, and here's a, I meet a girl for the first time, she was, you know, so, and so you, you kind of get that, you know, and then Japan, the same thing, you know, I, in my little hermeti hermetically sealed uh, neighborhood, I was known as, oh, he's a safe foreigner, don't worry, he's a nice person, and I, <laughs> Oh, I would, you know, I would drink and sing songs and get as silly as the next guy. And we had great, a great life in Japan, by the way, you know. And uh, where you, it's, it's a very wonderful place. Japan is a, have you been to Japan before? I have not, unfortunately, not yet. I, well, I'll I, tell you this, <clears throat> when people go to Japan, they uh, invariably, and most people go, you know, like in our world for martial arts of some type. And, and, and when they go to Japan, and irrespective of who they see or what they're doing, or, you know, when they come back, they all, they all, all invariably say the same thing. They're so nice. They're so nice. And, and the master of the dojo didn't let me pay for anything and, and, and even drove me to the airport. Gave me a gift. Oh, my God. 
God, you know. Well, here's what they don't know. Even the master hated you. <laughs> They're obliged to do that. <laughs> That's just Japanese culture. It's called tatebai, yeah. and uh, as opposed to the honne, you know. And, uh, and but anyway, that's another story. But here's here's what I here's what I like about tatebai honne. It took me years and years to figure this out. Um, in Japan, so you and I we grew up in Canada, and in Canada, which is again again. And a beautiful country, beautiful culture. Very, very multicultural now. Perhaps not so multicultural back in the 50s and 60s. Although, you know, we, we had our fair share of immigrants and all, all these German, all that kind of post-war years and stuff like that. So, he's, he's, And I mean, I grew up in, believe me, Canada was a very multicultural country. And, you know, I grew up speaking French and, and English as well. And, and so, you know, so, so from that, that point of view, we are very, we have a cultural identity very separate and very unique compared to the American culture, right? <laughs> you know, we it's adversarial. You know, like if I'm if I'm out on the street, even if I'm a nice Canadian or something, like, well, maybe, maybe maybe it's changed in the last 35 years. But where I was from, if you if I don't know you and you don't know me, and we're walking down the street and you're looking at me, and I look away, and I, and I if maybe if our eyes make contact, and I might give you a, you know one of those, or just look and I go walk away. I look back, and you're still looking at me. I look at you, and you're still looking at me. In my era, here's what would happen. What are you looking at? Yeah, that's exactly what's on coming out of the hood. That's what you know, it would be adversarial right away. Now, you know, maybe 50 years later, I might say, Are you looking at me? Do we know each other? You know, maybe you might handle it differently, but it was that was that was you don't do that, you don't look and stare at people that you don't know, and unless you have an eye, unless you, you're either looking to create a problem or you're looking to ask a question or something like that, you know, you're looking to encounter the person for uh, engage a person for, for a purpose in Japan. I could I could shove you and you would go, oh, I'm so I'm sorry, you know. Ah, you know it, it, it's so non-confrontational. So the point I wanted to make was there's no threat to your ego in Japanese culture. Zero. I'm telling you, you can go there and have the best time. You know, you feel a little bit reserved at first, a little bit reserved, you know. I don't do that. I look silly, and you know, because if I did that over in Canada, I look silly, or you know, oh, I don't, I look crazy. Or <laughs> just be in Japan for a few days and go up with the boys, you know, go down, you know, after work, go out for the proverbial drink, you know, the Nikai, uh, Ikai, Nikai Sankai, you know, uh, you know, the first party, the second party, the third party. By the time you get to the third party, you're, you know, you're singing karaoke, and you're drunk and and you, you don't even smoke you're smoking you're, you don't smoke but you're smoking you know and, and you're, you're listening to the president of the company squeal like a donkey and that's supposed to be singing ever it, it's just a fun and nobody cares they're just mm-hmm. having a fun line and then, yeah. you know it's a, and it's this uh, and we need more of that in, in the western world by the way you know and and i'll i'll, I'll, I'll just end this on the japanese culture part like this so so i'm in japan and I used to go up to the Hoyts and the, the JK Ombu Dojo up there, you know, uh, to, to get beat up from time to time, right? I remember one time there was a you know, group of foreigners came over and uh, I was not training, I, but I had an opportunity to watch it anyway. Like that. And um, I was listening to the translator. And it was the end of the night, you know, and and the, the guys were, you know, standing in Yoy, you know, the, the five guys who were from Europe against the five uh you know, I think Tanaka, about all, all the seniors over there. And it was a bloodbath, let me tell you that. It was some really hard fighting went back and on. And I was going, oh, we're, we're going to hate each other, man. And uh, as the translator started to speak, because my Japanese were not so good in those days, I almost fell into tears. It was it was such a moving story for me. Anyway, it was something like this, you know, I just stand like this, and you know the very stoic look on the face, you know, and and the Japanese was like as if nothing, you know, the, like you know a, a hand grenade could have gone off, and they were they had the same look on their face, you know. And the the guy said, you know, he said it's interesting. He says, I want to talk to you about cultural differences. He said, he said over here, he said, you know, the you foreign people are looking at the Japanese, and you're thinking to yourself. Look at, I mean, I hit that guy with everything I had and he didn't blink an eye and he's 
standing there like a samurai. I really like to be like him, you know. And uh, he said, but he says, I want to tell you that my Japanese colleagues, they're standing there and they're looking at you, and here's what they're thinking. Oh my God, I'm in so much pain right now. And, and those foreign guys, they look at they're smiling and they're, 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 they're so happy and I'd really like to be like them. <laughs> and so the moral of the story is, you know, that one group would like to be like another group, you know, and the other group would be like the other group. And he said, really, the issue is in the communication. And the fascinating part about you know, knowing someone and having an opportunity to spend some time going down a pathway with them is you get to know the person. And I think that that's why this thing about the ego and, you know, my style is better than yours and, and this boom ba of the balance is such an important uh, learning mechanism. And that's another reason why men the mentorship is such an important part in the fighting arts because otherwise, you know, you don't have that balance and, and the result is, you know, really don't get the desired um, uh, goal of results uh, uh, in a learner's uh, development. And so I think that, you know, if you haven't had a chance to go to Japan, uh, I wouldn't have any expectations of going. A lot, you know, a lot of people, because, you know, now we're talking about functionality. A lot of people go to Okinawa, by the way, and they, you know, they love it and all that type of stuff. But there's a growing number of uh, people going to Okinawa who now have a functional background. Maybe they've come out of BJJ or an MMA school or, or a SALAT school or, a, or you know, highly eclectic reality-based school, and then they've turned over to karate. Oh, Okinawa's there, and they go to karate, and, and they go to Okinawa, and they go, they're terrible. I don't mean to say they're terrible, I mean, but from a functional point of view, because what you and I embrace as highly functional application, they don't do it there. It's not there, and it's not in Japan as well. And it's still not part of this growing trend of, you know, looking at bunkai and applications and all your practices and stuff like that as well. So I say, and I always say to my friends, I say, oh, now it's a great place. You're going to go there. It's a, you know, it's a tropical island, uh, a little bit of rain and, and some storms, typhoons from time to time, but other great food, friendly people, very laid back mentality, small dojos, some of the best beaches on the entire planet. The girls are nice. You know, there's lots of great things to be there. You know, and, and now it's much more modern now. I, I think you can even go there without even knowing how to speak Japanese. You know, the, the, a lot of English speaking businesses and stuff like that. And so, you know, and uh, have a great time. Uh, and you practice karate, but uh, if you want to come back home with the secrets, probably not the place to go. I think we, we have more of the secrets here in the Western world than you're going to find over there type of thing, you know, so. Yeah. I'm, one of my students made a joke, no, but Sachin McCarthy, you're going now. <laughs> I, can't, I can't wait to see what a problem I create over there as well. <laughs> well, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, 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 I'm very, um, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very happy that uh, you, you found your vocation so many years ago. And uh, I think, you know, we're all, uh, we're all the better for it. And, uh, you know, I wish you the best of luck with your, with your travels. And uh, yeah. so anyway, thank you, um, Sensei McCarthy. This has been, this has been great. Um, I've learned a lot. Um, I've been taking notes the whole time and, and um, um, you know, it's, I'd heard, I, I'd heard you speak a few times before and uh, you know, some, some of it I was a little familiar with, but there's always, there's always something new that uh, um, I'm able to absorb when, when I, you know, hear, hear, hear you speak or, or, or um, you know, listen to your presentations, things like that. So uh, really, really appreciate your uh, agreeing to uh, be a part of this. And uh, uh, again, I wish you, all the very best of luck with your uh, with your pending move, and uh, I uh, hope you travel safely and and uh, that we'll be in touch again at some point. Well, thank, thank you. you so much for giving me the platform with which to uh, uh, deliver that, uh, which brings us together, and I'm so passionate about. So uh, I really appreciate it, and I hope, as I say, I hope that uh, um, there are some people out there who get something from it, and. Uh, Please uh, don't hesitate to reach out to me in the future if you need something. I'd be more than happy to help you uh, if, if it's within my grasp to do that. And with that, I will bid you a pleasant farewell and say thank you very much uh, to everybody out there who, who was listening. 
and um, again, you can you can find me on Facebook or Google um, website. It's Kolu Utsnadi or it's Patrick McCarthy. And uh, yeah, thanks again. Great, thank you very much. Oh.